Let me start this video by asking you a question. Which category of stocks do you think have the best returns in the long term? Are they large caps? Are they small caps? Or mid caps? I'll give you some time to think. In the meanwhile, let's quickly hear what some of my colleagues think. Well, I think small caps. Most small cap funds have delivered more than 70% returns in the last one year. Large cap must have done better over the long term. They are the biggest companies in India. Of course, small caps. Look at the crazy returns and inflows in mutual funds. None of them got the answer right. In the long term, mid caps have the best returns. Let's look at how 100 rupees would have grown in Nifty 100, Nifty mid cap 150 and Nifty small cap 250 in the last 10 years. Your investment would be 400 rupees in Nifty 100 index. In Nifty small cap 250, it would be 600. But in the Nifty mid cap 150, you would have made 734 rupees. Mid caps are a sweet spot between large and small caps. They give you the opportunity to invest in future leaders. And despite better returns, they are also less volatile than small caps. But when it comes to investing in mid caps, very few active funds have been able to outperform the benchmark consistently. But a fund that we're going to talk about today is among the few funds that have been able to do so. The fund we are referring to is Motilal Oswal Midcap Fund. And in this video, we're going to dive deep into it. Hello and welcome to Iri Money's YouTube channel. Now, around a month back, we compared midcap funds from SDFC, Kotec, and Nippon. Now, a lot of viewers commented and asked us to analyze Motila Loswal midcap fund. So, today we are going to analyze Motila Loswal midcap fund's performance and look at the investment strategy this fund follows. But before we start, a quick update. This video is part of our fund review playlist. Here, we analyze the performance of top performing mutual funds and look at their investment style. I recommend you explore that playlist. I've attached the link in the description box below. Okay, so let's now start by looking at the performance of Mutila Loswal Midcap Fund. To analyze the performance, we first of course looked at the fund's returns. To get a comprehensive picture, we look at three different returns. First, let's see how the scheme has performed over the last 1, 3, 5, 7 and 10 years. Here, we found that the fund performed better than the benchmark as well as the category average of mid-cap funds in all time frames. Now, very few mid-cap funds have this kind of outperformance. Next, we looked at the SIP returns. To measure the SIP returns, we calculated how an SIP of 10,000 rupees started 10 years ago would have performed. Now, the fund generated 23.12% returns. During the same period, Nifty mid-cap 150 generated a return of 21.61%. Now, the SIP returns were not only better than the benchmark, but the second highest in the category. Lastly, we examined the seven-year rolling returns of the fund between 2014 and 2024. The average return of the fund in those periods was 16.61%. The returns of Nifty Midcap 150 was 17.4%. So here, the fund has underperformed the benchmark by a thin margin of 0.8 percentage points. Now we wanted to see why the fund has better SIP and trailing returns, but underperformed the benchmark in the case of rolling returns. For this, we plotted the returns of all seven year periods on a graph. Now we noticed that the fund has done better than the benchmark in recent years. This recent outperformance could be a reason why trailing and SIP returns look better than the benchmark. Our observation is that in the long term, the fund's returns are similar to the benchmark. Only in the recent years, it has started outperforming the Nifty Midcap 150. Next, let's understand the volatility in this fund. For this, we looked at the standard deviation of the rolling returns. This bit is technical. All we need to see if the standard deviation number is higher or lower than the benchmark. A higher number means the fund is riskier than the benchmark. Now the standard deviation of Motila Loswal Midcap Fund is higher than both the benchmark and the category average. This is neither good nor bad. It helps you understand what to expect from the fund during different market cycles. Let's also look at the past behavior of the fund when Midcap space saw corrections. For this, we looked at the quarters when the Nifty Midcap 150 had negative returns. Now, since March 2014, there have been 12 such quarters. The average returns of all Midcap funds were better than that of index in 11 out of 12 quarters. On the other hand, Motilal Oswal Midcap Fund's performance was better in 9 out of 12 quarters. This means most active Midcap funds have a better downside protection than the Midcap index. And while Motilal Oswal Midcap Fund has decent downside protection, it's not as good as most other funds in the category. Alright, 
Now let's move to the next section of the video and examine the stock picking strategy of the fund. This fund is managed by Mr. Niket Shah, who is also the Chief Investment Officer at Motila Roswal Mutual Fund. He has a total work experience of around 16 years, which makes him one of the youngest CISOs in the industry. Let's start with the number of stocks Niket Shah maintains in the portfolio. A low number of stock means a concentrated portfolio. This is a high risk, high return strategy. A few stocks can impact the overall performance of the portfolio, both negatively and positively. A concentrated portfolio requires the fund manager to have high conviction in his bets. Conversely, if the fund holds a large number of stocks, it follows a diversified approach. Here, the impact of a few stocks in the overall portfolio is low. So this approach also leaves room for error. Now, as of April 2024, the fund had only 22 stocks. This was the lowest in the entire mid cap space. Now, historically, the fund has preferred a portfolio of less than 30 stocks. If you look at the portfolio, it appears that the fund manager has a lot of conviction in his stock picks as it's a concentrated portfolio. About 12% of the 9,800 crore assets under management are in geo financial services. Around 8% is in Kalyan Dwellers. That's almost 20% of the entire portfolio in just two stocks. In fact, the top five stocks comprise over 40% of the assets under management. Now, this kind of concentrated portfolio is not very common. This could also be the reason behind the fund's high volatility we discussed in the earlier section. Now, the fund has fewer stocks compared to other mid-cap schemes. But are these long-term bets or does the fund manager buy and sell frequently? To answer this question, we'll look at the turnover ratio of the fund. This tells us how frequently the fund manager buys and sells stocks. Now, a ratio of more than 100 indicates the entire portfolio was changed in the last year. A lower turnover ratio indicates a buy and hold strategy. Now, as of April 2024, this fund has a portfolio turnover ratio of 131. This ratio is on the higher side. So, we compare the turnover ratio with its peers. The fund stood fifth here. Now, any fund manager who has high conviction stock picks doesn't buy and sell too frequently. So, a high turnover ratio was quite surprising. So, we examined all the stocks the fund has held since its inception and observed the general holding trend. We saw that 160 unique stocks have been part of the fund's portfolio since its inception. The fund's average holding period in these stocks was approximately 18 months. Now, 18 months is a decent holding period for any active fund. Plus, many stocks were held for more than 5 years. For example, Voltas has been in the fund's portfolio for nearly 9 years. And in this period, it has generated a 690% return for the fund. Similarly, Bajaj Finance was another multi-bagger that the fund spotted early, generating 25x returns for the fund. So the fund has a decent holding period in its stocks. But then why is the portfolio turnover ratio of the fund high? To find the answer, we looked at some of the shares the fund bought and sold in the same year. We saw two trends. First, the fund likes to participate in IPOs. Recently, the fund manager invested in IPOs such as Startup Technologies and Idea Forge and exited the holdings quickly. This is one factor that contributed to the fund's high turnover ratio. Now, apart from this, we also saw that the fund manager sells stocks early on if they start to underperform. Let's take the case of Trent as an example. The fund entered the stock in August 2022 and kept buying more until November 2022. But it exited the stock over the next three months. So roughly, it held the stock for six to seven months. Now, if we look at the price movement of the stock during this period, we see that the fund actually sold the stock at a loss. It entered the stock when the price was around 1400 and exited it when it was around 1200. The same happened with Persistent Systems and Usha Martin. So even though the fund manager is highly confident about his bets, he sells them early on if they start to underperform. So basically, he cuts down the loser short. Now, it's possible that the fund manager takes such quick sell calls as the portfolio is concentrated and underperformance of a few stocks can impact the scheme's performance. Next, let's look at the market cap allocation of this fund and compare it with the category. Currently, the fund allocates 71% to mid caps, 19% to large caps and 3% to small caps. The fund's cash holding is only 7%. The cash holdings could mean that the fund manager has a positive outlook on the markets and doesn't want to miss the opportunity by staying in cash. Similarly, in the past, the fund didn't necessarily have a high allocation to large caps, 
based on market conditions, the fund manager sometimes kept a higher allocation to large caps and sometimes to small caps. Finally, let's look at the top five sectors where the fund has invested. This will tell us if the fund takes contrarian calls. Now at present, the fund has the highest allocation to IT sector, which stands close to 15%. This is significantly higher than the category and it shows that the fund manager has a contra view of the IT sector. And apart from the IT sector, there are some other unique bets the fund manager has taken. There's a high allocation to telecom and jewelry sector. Overall, the investment style of this fund is unique. And if you are looking to invest in a mid cap fund, you can definitely shortlist this one. But do remember that it's more volatile than other funds. Further, the concentrated investment style and the contra calls of the fund manager make the scheme stand out. However, if some of these don't work as the fund manager expected, they can impact the fund's performance. Now, if you want to compare Mutila Loswal Midcap Fund with its peers, I would suggest you check out the comparison video we did for SDFC, Kotec and Nippon Midcap Funds. And with this, we have come to the end of the video. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please share it with your friends and family. I'll see you soon again with a new video. Till then, take care. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.